I'd like to call the Tuesday, July 18, 2017, Papillion City Council meeting in order. Ms. Brown, would you please take the roll? Florence. Here. Mumgard. Here. Gaines. Here. Glover. Here. Jaworski. Here. Kluke. Stubbe. Here. Ingberg. Here. Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you. And do we have an affidavit of publication on file? That's correct. In a current copy, the Open Meetings Act is posted in the back of the council chambers. Ms. Myers, administrator's report, please. Thank you, Mayor. We received some good news. Uh, the state of Nebraska has authorized the activation of the dual turning arrows at the intersection of 84th Street and Highway 370. As you know, we received multiple concerns about the yellow flashing arrow that caused some confusion. So that is good, and we expect that installation to be cl complete in early August, so prior to the school year. Um, also, Shram Road from Turkey Road to 114th Street will be opened either August 1st or 2nd. And then we received a request and an appropriate request um, to install American flags south of Highway 370 on 84th Street. So our city crews will be working on that and hopefully we'll get a number of those installed prior to Labor Day. And the last and final thing is the 2017-2018 budget will be introduced on August 1st. So Mayor Black and I, in cooperation with Nancy, are working on that. And we'll have a budget packet out to you this Friday for your review. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you very much. Do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Oh. Motion by Councilman Glover. Second. Second by Councilman Gaines. Do we, Mr. Florence. So I'd like to pull uh, six and seven. Item six and seven are pulled. Do we have any, on the balance of the items, do we have any proponents? Do we have any opponents? Any council discussion? Please vote on everything except C6 and seven. Seven yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Next is item C6, resolution R170136. A resolution to approve the NEPA Professional Services Agreement between the City of Papillion and Felsberg, Holt, and Olivig for the 96th and Highway 370 intersection. Is there a motion to approve resolution R170136? Motion. Motion by Councilman Stubbe. Second. Second by Councilman Ingberg. Uh, do we have any proponents? Any opponents? Council discussion. Mr. Florence. Yeah, I, uh, could we get an update or uh, just kind of an explanation on the need for this? Yes, look to be there the city engineer, Marty, or the police chief, whoever's most appropriate. Well, last year in about February, we applied for some safety grants for that intersection because of just how it's stacking and the number of accidents that have occurred at that intersection. So we were awarded some safety funds. And so in order to make that intersection more flowable and doable we're uh, this is a first step into getting the pe put together we're, we'll be adding a next year an additional southbound to eastbound turn lane and also installing a, a southbound to westbound turn lane at that intersection with some few minor tweaks the number of rear end accidents there uh, qualified that for the safety funds so it's an 80 20 split with NDOR and Federal Highway. Yeah, so that was going to be my question. Has the intersection demonstrated itself to be yeah, more it, problematic than others in the city? Yes, and it applied, for, it, it, it allowed us to get these safety funds. Good, thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Mumgard. Well, yeah, can you quantify that? Tell us more about the accident rate at that intersection. Chief? I believe the accident rate was uh, slightly higher than other ones across uh, um, 370. Uh, the severity of those accidents was not, uh, there was more accidents there, but they weren't as severe as other intersections is a better way to state it. Um, but as far as numbers, I'd have to go back to the original statistics when we first started this conversation. Well, okay, I guess I've never had a problem there. I'm just wondering, are the accidents as a result of turning people or what's going on at that intersection? I mean, we're putting in turn lanes, so that is that gonna solve a problem there? 
Yeah, they, they studied it, and uh, we had re we had a number of rear end accidents south westbound and others. But the stacking there in the morning and evening, it'll go back, it'll go down through Rawhide. So we're trying to flow the cars through that intersection more smoothly and efficiently. So the people that are coming out on Rawhide and the other will have time to get out. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Any other council discussion? If not, please vote. Seven yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Related item is C7, resolution R170137. A resolution to approve the preliminary engineering services agreement between the city of Papillion and Felsberg Holt and Ulevig for the 96th and Highway 370 intersection. Is there a motion to approve resolution R170137? Motion by Councilman Glover. Second. Second by Councilman Florence. Any proponents? Any opponents? Council discussion? Please vote. Seven yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Next is item F1, resolution R170132. Uh, this item was tabled from the July 5th meeting pending a submission of, a, of an event permit application which came in. Um, so resolution R170132, a resolution to approve a special designated liquor license for Jane Lee Lind Investments, LLC. Doing business as Twisted Vine, 7626 Legacy Street for a street dance event at First Street Plaza on August 12, 2017 from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. Is there a motion to approve resolution R170132? Motion. motion by Councilman Jaworski. Second. Second by Councilman Stubbe. Uh, staff is requesting an amendment. Um, when the event permit application came in, there were modifications made to the special designated liquor license. Um, and so staff is uh, requesting a motion to amend to alter the license time and area. And then also to request a waiver of city code section 8110, which prohibits any person to sell, dispense, or consume alcoholic liquor uh, on city property. Part of this does extend on the First Street Plaza, which is the reason for, uh, for that waiver. Is there a motion to amend resolution R170132? Motion. motion by Councilman Jaworski. Second, Second by Councilman Stubbe. Um, are there any proponents on the motion to amend? And the applicant is here. Are there any opponents on the motion to amend? Any council discussions? Mr. Mumgard. Yeah, I just want to clarify um, the diagram as to where the license and sale and consumption will be. Is it actually on the plaza or is it on First Street? And if you can enter, state your name for the record, please. Catherine Rannells. The okay, yeah, the, the diagram that you submitted told me it was on First Street. Yes. But the discussion has been about being on the plaza. Is the beer garden going to be on the first street or on the plaza? It is on first street. Which is city prop, which is okay. municipal. Okay. And so then I understand the diagram. Thank you very okay. much. Anything else? Any other council discussion? Please vote on the motion to amend. Seven yeas, zero nays. Motion to amend is approved. Is there a motion to approve resolution R170132 as amended? Motion. motion by Councilman Jaworski. Second. Second by Councilman Stubbe. Any other council discussion? Please vote on the original motion as amended. Seven yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Thank you. Next is item F2, resolution R17-01033, resolution R17, did that one, a resolution to award the base bid and change order number one for removal and replacement of the Nebraska 85 Washington Street pedestrian bridge to Charles Varana and Sons Construction Company of Omaha in the amount of $1,844,476.10. Is there a motion to approve resolution R17-0133? Motion by Councilman Glover. Second. Second by Councilman Gaines. Do we have any proponents? Do we have any opponents? Any council discussion? Mr. Stubbe. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. First of all, I want to start out by uh, expressing my appreciation to city staff and the contractor for working through this. I know the original bids came in about a half a million dollars higher than what the estimate was, and they've, they've whittled it down now to to a cost that is comparable to uh, to what the estimate was. I also want to 
uh, indicate that I was a little bit reluctant with regard to, to having this actually go, go forward because of the concern with the significant length increase from what the existing structure is. But I want to th thank uh, Dr. Rickley uh, for indicating their support to make sure that the students won't dash across the road, that they'll actually end up using the structure to get from one side to the other. So I want to thank him for that. Thank you. Any other, Mr. Ingberg? Is this not work? There it is. Um, I'm going to assume the construction of this is going to flow into the school year. Uh, you're, you're doing it primarily because you have some concerns about the current structure existing any longer than necessary. That's, that's correct. That's correct. Um, after uh, inspection of the structure over the past several years, um, we've seen significant de delamination, uh, spalling, um, staining, corrosion uh, of the structure, and it's, it's just a, an extreme concern for students and the traveling public at this point in time. Um, the, the contractor is anticipating on starting as soon as we can get contracts signed, um, and the substantial completion date for the structure is um, the end of November of this year. Uh, making it usable to the students for the, the school year. Uh, some of the staining and painting, uh, anti-graffiti work that will go onto the concrete piers itself um, will m most likely carry into the spring, but um, substantial completion is uh, late November of this year. That answer your question? Okay, any other council discussion? Mr. Glover. Um, I, I know this has been a, a long drawn up process I know that uh, w we had reservations about the cost and and uh, and when this thing come in uh, about a half a million dollars over I'm like you got to be kidding me with all the work that we did and and uh, um, I I just want to thank the rest of the council and I want to thank the committee that um, uh, that that we were on to come up with some resolution that we didn't have to come back and ask for another half million dollars. We we uh, we took some things out that um, that we didn't have before and that we that we um, uh, really didn't need. Um, we added some uh, steps, side steps to uh, to kind of take care of, of uh, Councilman Stubbe's uh, concerns and maybe shorten it up a little bit for for some of the uh, students that, that will be using it. And uh, thank the school district for uh, supporting and allowing um, a design that's going to infringe upon their um, uh, property and yet provide the, the safety that's much needed for the students and, uh, and the taxpayers of the school district. So thank you very much uh, and uh, uh, thank you for your support. Thank you. Mr. Mumgard. Uh, yeah, I just want to echo what was said. and. and pointing out that, that when we approved this, we did it on a unanimous vote. But I can assure you that if a vote had been taken early on in the process, this would have lost, you would not have an overpass. Um, it was really, really hard for myself and other council members to justify spending that kind of money on something like that overpass. <clears throat> it's rare to see those things get built. Uh, spending close to $2 million uh, for that sort of a crosswalk is uh, a big gulp. Uh, and I can tell, tell, I can say for myself, like Mr. Stubbe, it is only with the encouragement and the uh, participation of the school board and the school district that I was willing to vote for it, that if that had not come forward and the commitments had not been made, no, I would not have voted for this. Uh, so I look forward to a long and healthy relationship uh, and many, many students enjoying that overpass. Thank you. Thank you. Any other council comments? If not, please vote. Seven yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Thank you, Dr. Rickley. Uh, that's all the main agenda items. Are there uh, no committees of met? Do we have any comments from the floor? No comments from the floor. Any other council comments? 
Only a couple of things from the last couple of weeks that I'll point out. Um, Ms. Myers and I uh, participated in uh, second round interviews, or probably third round of interviews if you take the assessments for the assistant city administrator position. Um, and we will be bringing a name forward uh, very shortly. Um, anticipate that uh, that'll be public in the next uh, sometime this week uh, that will be that will name will be public and uh, if that plays out the way I think it does that'll be on the August 1st agenda for uh, for uh, confirmation from you as the council um, Ms. Hansen also put on the triathlon again this year everybody that went into the water came out of the water uh, it's always a nervous time on the triathlon uh, so thank you again. We just hear wonderful things about that event and the people that it brings to town. Um, we've also had several meetings with uh, Sampson Construction and Jay from Alley Pointer in regards to the community center, and that's progressing down to where the contractor should be fairly soon giving us a fixed price bid, and that'll be the next step in the process then is that fixed price coming to the council. And again, I think we anticipate that'll be in October. Uh, that coming to council for a, for a decision and a vote on on accepting that. Um, also, Ms. Myers mentioned a number of the roads that are opening up. Um, Lincoln Road today opened up to Polk Street, and so now from 84th Street you can get full access on Lincoln to Trinity Emanuel. Um, so that'll be really nice for that neighborhood, keeping that traffic out. And then some of the property we own there where the weeds are growing up dur during that construction will start being cleaned up tomorrow. So uh, thank you, Marty and Jeff, for everything you've done on that tough situation with the neighborhoods there. And then the only other thing, um, if people remember a few years ago, we hosted a delegation of government officials from Russia for an entire day. Um, and yesterday I actually had lunch with a delegation from Japan and it was under the same program. The U.S. State Department has a program called the International Visitors Leadership Program and in the embassies of various countries they look for the next generation leaders of that country and they bring them over to the U.S. for, uh, for uh, several weeks in a training program. And uh, this is the second time Papillion's actually had some of them, and it was from Japan this year. One of the things they pointed out, the program's been going on for about 70 years, and during that 70 years, there's been about 351 participants of that program who are now or have been presidents or prime ministers of their country. Uh, so that was an interesting statistic to sit and have uh, lunch with some of these gentlemen who might be at that level of leadership in their government next time. So um, Papillion's on the radar for how does local government work in the United States? Uh, this group, and I think it was the same with the Russians, they flew into D.C., then they came to Omaha, met in Papillion, and then they'll go, this group's going to go to Pensacola, Florida, and then they're going to go to Hawaii, and then they'll go back home. Um, so pretty unique opportunity for Papillion to, to work there. I think that's all the major updates. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion, motion by Councilman Glover. Second. Second by Councilman Gaines. Please vote. Seven yeas, zero nays. We are adjourned.